Hey everyone, Ari Labs here with a blog to watch. Please subscribe to our videos on YouTube and like this video if you find it useful. This is a review of the Favre Luba Raider Sea King. This is a new watch for 2018 and it's it's a dress watch. It's a sport dress watch. It's a dressy sport watch. It's a sporty dress watch. It's somewhere in between and, and I really like the fact that this is a good daily wear that incorporates a lot of interesting elements um, related to the history of Favre Luba. So the first thing we need to look at is the case and understand the size. So this case is 41 millimeters wide and the same case style is more or less produced by the brand in, in a few different versions within the Raider series. It goes up to something like I think for the harpoon like 47 millimeters and at 41 millimeters I think it's a great sort of everyday size. 41 is, is a good mid-size uh, shape or size for that matter but and then in this sort of uh, somewhere between a cushion and a tonneau shape it wears bigger so I think again 41 is a good size for a daily wear so there it is on the wrist and you can see it it, it goes almost to the edge of my wrist I do have small wrists but again this watch has the substantialness that I'm looking for in a sport watch, but it has sort of a versatile elegance of a daily watch or a dress watch. And it's and they really try to tone it down in terms of the sportiness to get a look that's a little bit dressier. One of the things I think was very interesting is the bezel design. So first you have a look that is looks like it's meant to be turned by a wrench. So it's sort of the look of a case back and that goes to sort of the instrumental look. And then you have this outer structure, which is also looks like you could include like a key in it to turn it. And again, that's sort of a look which is inspired by the functionality of tool watches, namely dive watches that have things screwed down for water resistance purposes. You don't see that too much on the, the, the top of the watch. Oftentimes this is a design element which would be on the bottom of the watch. Um, and then it, it, it makes you think of things like Rolex's fluted bezel, which is actually also inspired by the, the ability to open a case by, by its sort of notched look. You think of the, the Audemars Piguet Royal Oak that has also a little bit of a geometric bezel. So there's things that this suggests and it, it reminds you of some other watches. It's definitely got a lot of the Favre Luba DNA, but it's simple, right? My only issue with this watch, and that is that I do like the dial, but I think that the inner dial is a little bit sparse. This dial comes in black, blue, as well as this gray color, which I find to be the most interesting. I think it's the most sort of fashion forward for right now because gray is apparently still in. The minute hand is probably the most interesting with this sort of diamond shape at the edge. It reminds you a little bit of the Tudor Snowflake, but I actually like this one a little bit more. And it's definitely inspired by 1970s-ish uh, era designs. Legibility is very good, and the detailing on the dial is enough to give it character, but it's still very much a tool watch in the sense that there aren't extra things. Even though this is sort of their dress watch, the Raider Sea King is still a sport watch in the sense that it's water resistant to 300 meters, has a nice sporty bracelet. You can get the same watch on a strap as well. It has a sapphire crystal, of course. It, um, it's thick and chunky and, and feels durable. It's definitely a heavy watch. And so you have this combination of you know real sport qualities with a look that is sport dressy, I guess you could say. I always struggle, you know, it's like the, the Rolex uh, Datejust is the perfect example for when you don't really know whether it's a sport watch. It's not really a sport watch, it's not really a dress watch. It's sort of somewhere in between. I used to call it a jewelry watch or a men's jewelry watch. I think this is definitely more in the sporty direction, but I think that Favre Luba did a really good job in ensuring its its overall versatility. Inside the watch is a Swiss Eta 24-2 automatic movement. So nothing special, but definitely a solid Swiss workhorse in there that everyone likes and is a very popular movement, especially in dive style watches. I'm not sure why that is, maybe because of the thickness of the movement. It's not super thick, but dive watches um, are, you know, tend to be a little bit more on the thick, thick side. If you look at some of the detailing in the case, I think you'll appreciate what they did to make it look thinner. So you have this sort of exaggerated lug structure here, which is brushed. And most of the middle case is actually polished. And your eyes focus on this curved element here, when in reality, this is quite a thick watch. Well, not super thick, but it, it's, it's thicker than it wears. The, the flat back means that it wears very close to your wrist. So when you wear it, 
At least I don't think, boy, that's a super thick watch. It's about as thick as, an, as a normal dive watch should be. If this was only water, it's 100 meters, I'd say, eh, I don't know why the case has to be so thick. But again, screw down crown, and it is a, it is a diver style watch. It doesn't have a rotating bezel, but as much as it can be, it's a diver style watch, um, especially when it comes to durability and, and the look of the bracelet. Anyways, so this is the Favre Luba Raider Sea King. 41 millimeters wide, 300 meter water resistant, 28-24-2 automatic movement. Stylish. I, I enjoyed it a lot. I found it versatile. This, for me, is a watch for someone who wants a watch from a traditional Swiss brand that's not one of the mainstream ones, is interested in sport watches, but also wants to wear have something they can wear with a suit or a little bit more formal occasion. So there's it's for the right customer, this is a perfect thing, and I've been enjoying wearing this watch a lot. Price with the bracelet is 1,950 Swiss francs, and on the strap it is 1,750 Swiss francs. You can see more on a blog to watch. Thanks. Mm -hmm.